So, assalamu alaikum everyone. I hope that by the time you guys might have understood that an acceleration is essential to keep a particle following a circular path, obviously from my previous videos. But then, from Newton's second law of motion, you might already have in your minds that in an inertial reference frame, every acceleration is caused by some force, and so should be the case with the particle following the circular path, which should have a value equal to the product of the centripetal acceleration and mass of the particle. This force is known as centripetal force. It is provided by tension in a string, gravity, attractive forces between the static charges, or magnetic field. It's not a new kind of force, but simply a force towards the center of the circular path. This is what it is when we look at it from an inertial reference frame. Now, if you look at the particle from the rotating reference frame, or better to say, from the particle's reference frame, we will see that an outward force is acting on the particle, and such a force is known as centrifugal force. It is equal to the magnitude of the centripetal force, just that it's working radially outwards, and centripetal force is required to counter that. So, we can say that an object in a non-inertial reference frame, accelerating at a0, will always have a pseudo force of magnitude ma0 uh, in the direction opposite to a0. Scientists wanted to exploit this effect to create artificial gravity by making the space stations rotate at an angular velocity such that m omega squared r uh, equals mg, or simply centrifugal acceleration equals the gravitational acceleration that we experience on Earth. Though the concept has never made it out of the lab except for in movies like A Space Odyssey. For the real-life scenario, the concept is used to create multiple times of the gravitational force or g-force to train uh, fighter plane pilots. You might have seen accidents like these. This happens because cars follow a circular path while making turns, and to make turns happen, the frictional force between the track and the wheel provide for the centripetal force. But since the car has greater instantaneous velocity, the required centripetal force turns out to be higher than the static friction between the track and the contact point on the wheel. Why static friction? This is because the wheel is rolling on the track, and the relative velocity between the track and the contact point on the wheel is zero at the moment of contact. This situation can be avoided by slowing down the car or by banking the roads to a certain angle. This is so that the horizontal component of the normal reaction by the track can provide for the centripetal force, which from car's reference frame is counteracting the centrifugal force. And the other component of the normal reaction, which is vertical component, is counteracting the weight. Such a case is known as frictionless banking, since friction in and itself is a reactive force, and if there is no unbalanced force, then there will be no friction. Now, we can divide equation 1 by 2 to get the required velocity for the frictionless banking. In this case, maximum velocity depends on the radius of the curve and the banking angle. But for the real-life scenario, it is really hard to achieve that sweet spot, so friction is also taken in account. Here we need to note the way friction is pointing. For maximum allowable speed, friction points downwards on the inclined plane. So here we have a component of normal reaction and a component of friction to work as centripetal force and the vertical component of the reaction force will work against the weight and the vertical component of friction. Now these two equations can be solved for calculation of maximum allowable speed. Here the magnitude of the maximum allowable speed also depends upon the coefficient of friction between the tires and the road along with the radius of the turn and the banking angle. Not only on land but also in air. While making turns, aircrafts roll to a banked position. In this case, horizontal component of the lift from the wings provide for the centripetal force and the vertical component balances the weight of the aircraft. So again, from these equations, we can easily calculate the value of the required velocity of the aircraft to make turns. And here we have something what we got in the frictionless banking. 
So I think that is it for today. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. Assalamu alaikum.